tabaco, 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 tabaco. Me lao, me lao, me lao, me lao, me lao. Fue usada por tortores, licenciados y abogados, santeros y paleros, vendedores de mercado. Superó a la medicina, a los productos exportado, acabó con la malicia, la tristeza y el pecado. Qué tradición. Tabaco. Is there an association, Frank, between genius and cigars? I mean, look at the, the great <laughs> men in history who have smoked cigars, a uh, Churchill, Twain. Well, let's put it this way. I think there is an association between people who appreciate the finer things in life, you know, that life has to offer, and intelligence. I mean, I think that, you know, when one becomes sophisticated about what pleasures can be, that a fine cigar, a fine wine, a fine writing pen, a fine a lot of things, one maybe can appreciate. I think that comes with intelligence and wisdom and, you know, having an appreciation for fine things. And uh, I think that's what one of the things that's wrong with this tyranny that's going on now is that there's nobody arguing the side that there's something nice and fine here. There's a pleasure here uh, to be cultivated. I mean, not to be abused. I mean, anybody can do too much of anything. But I think that one of life's great pleasures is smoking a cigar like this. And I think that the people that do it and that are intelligent and all do it because they have that knowledge, you know. Uh, it's not a knee-jerk reaction again to something they just say it's offensive, it's bad for me, and there's nothing in it. There's another issue that I think uh, needs to be addressed, and that's the issue of uh, of air circulation. You know, uh, people uh, in an enclosed environment will, will become offended by uh, smoke. Well, are they be, if being offended by my smoke or the lack of air circulation, which should be in these uh, in these buildings today? In the old days, you used to have buildings with windows that opened. Yeah. There was cross ventilation in every home. There was cross ventilation in offices. There were fans going. You had good fresh air for everyone, uh, so you could smoke in there, and everyone else really wasn't offended by the smoke because there was constantly a new source of fresh air. Today you have these, uh, in order to save energy, these energy efficient office buildings and homes where windows don't open. Hotels, the same thing. Windows don't open. You cannot get fresh air unless it's blown through a vent. And airlines, office buildings, they all try to save money, the people that own these buildings, and they try to save money by not circulating the air, not filtering the air the way it should be filtered. And there's, this is, I think, a real important thing. When there's smoke in the air, if you're in a, in a building and you're in an office and you see smoke in the air, you shouldn't be yelling at the smoker. You should be yelling at the guy that owns the building and saying, this air is not circulating properly because if there's smoke hanging in the air, it means that there are other things that you cannot <coughs> see, bacteria, germs, and other things that can really hurt you. The smoke is something that's visible. That's a warning sign. That's not really the offensive thing. The offensive things are the invisible things, the bacteria that's airborne that can really make you sick. And I think, I think it's an advantage to having a smoker in a building because if you see the smoke hanging in the air, you know that there's something else wrong that you don't know about. Part of the problem, I think, is, has come from, again, I hate to, you know, to blame cigarettes, but cigarettes, when cigarettes came into vogue, uh, in the 20s, really at, during World War I, actually, is when they came into vogue. Uh, and because of, they were very easy to smoke for the troops, uh, they were convenient. Um, and I think because of the ease of, of smoking or enjoying a cigarette, uh, people started smoking all over the place. And cigarettes, as you know, being an abuse of the tobacco because you're inhaling it into your lungs every puff, becomes a habit. So when you smoke cigarettes, you smoke cigarettes. I smoke, when I smoke cigarettes, I smoke two and a half, three packs a day. Jesus. Uh, now I can go for days without smoking a cigar if I don't have the time to sit down and enjoy it. I don't smoke a cigar out of habit. I smoke a cigar because I want to enjoy a cigar. Right, me too. And there's a big difference. There's a very big difference. What, basically what I was saying, though, is in the, in the bygone days, you had a smoking room. You had a smoking room jacket you wore. Exactly. You had, uh, there was a smoking car on the trains. Uh, 
again, smokers don't want to offend someone who doesn't enjoy tobacco. It's fine. They should, they should be free to enjoy what they enjoy, and smokers should be able to enjoy what they enjoy. Well, what do you say to the people who, who say, well, by smoking, you're killing yourself? Uh, what well, business? That's, that's your, that's, what, that's that's your problem. You tell that to it's George, tell that to George Burns, that smoking a cigar is going to kill George Burns. Tell George, George, you've got to stop smoking <laughs> or you're going to die. The man is a hundred, he's older than dirt. This and guy. what business <laughs> is it for them to tell you what's hurting you? Well, of course. I mean, this is the, I mean, we are, I mean, here we are in Beverly Hills, and this is a very interesting point. I'm just thinking, where in this four or five block area could we smoke a cigar other than in this room? Now, we could walk outside and do it. We would get some really nasty looks, even on the street. Yeah, that's right. And there's certainly no uh, restaurants or stores that would permit this. We are already forced into a little room in Beverly Hills. It's a shame. I hate to think that five years from now, it's possible we may not be able to smoke in this room, you know, the way mm -hmm. things are moving. They. I wouldn't be surprised if they don't try to outlaw this stuff. I no, mean, I, that's, you know, that's outlawed entirely. Sure, that's uh, sure. Going. It's, it's prohibition. Coming that way. It's going that way. It's prohibition. Yeah. I'm really afraid the next the next thing they're going to try to outlaw. You just watch it. Probably going to come in the next two years. They're going to try. I, I hope they. Well, the direction and the, but the direction is largely again against cigarette smokers, and there's no distinction made. That, that's the problem. But they're not they're making, they're the, not distinction. making the distinction. The no, they're they're no distinction. throwing it all together. <clears throat> and these people that are sitting up there voting and smoking in the cloakroom will vote to put their own pleasures out of business because they'll sell out to it. I mean, just watch it. Uh -huh. That's what's going to happen. And then we'll have well, illegal cigars. I mean, see, I heard a rumor that William Bennett, when he was at the University of Texas, smoked pot regularly. He's the drug czar. Right. <laughs> Do you think that any of these uh, anti-smoking advocates uh, smoke? No, I don't think so. No, I think but I do, I do think honest. there's another issue to be addressed with these anti-smoking advocates. You know, there is people, I saw, I saw a billboard today, the other day, it was really offensive, and it was in the form of a health warning on the cigarette uh, packages, and it said, warning, the tobacco industry is not your friend. That was the, that was the, uh, uh, the billboard. That's I, that, that, to me, that, that to me is offensive. Because what you're not, what you're not really acknowledging is that these anti-smoking people are an industry. These people are making their livelihood by telling you that you can't smoke. That's how they make their money. Uh, all of this tax dollars goes toward their livelihood, pays their bills, and it's an industry. You know, the Schick Center quit smoking. This is a business. Mm -hmm. These people are not in it for some uh, uh, higher reason. They're in it to make money. Mm -hmm. So they're making money, and but they're not really regarded as an industry. But there is an, an anti-smoking industry, and those people are not my friends. Mm -hmm. so. And, and it's, it's broader than just smoking. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's in art, it's in literature, it's yeah, in we're music. Seeing that. We're seeing that I mean, we're seeing it across the board. I mean, these people, it, we're going National back Endowment to of the, the 50s. Exactly. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's really an insidious thing, and it's very frightening. We're, you know, it, it, it is like all of these things that we have assumed were our rights, and I think probably by the Constitution and the Bill of Rights are, are being chipped away, you know, and we're being told, you know, for our good health and our benefit that we shouldn't do certain things, you know. Uh, and if you, you let, and, and they win these little victories, and it keeps, you know, they, they win one and they go a step further. Well, that's true. I mean, you're looking at the, this is this is the classic legislation of morality, which is operating at all. I mean, we have look at the abortion issue, which is uh, you know that's one of the more important uh, matters that faces uh, modern society. Which the roots of which are really population control, which is the most serious thing the world is facing. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, that is that is uh, an area of great concern. It's, well, it's also economics. You're talking about economics. It's also economics, and your point's a very good one, Wayne, about uh, the economics of uh, special interests that operate at, at, at levels pro and con all across the board. You know, I, this is a wall of pictures of celebrities here. <coughs> I think it would be wonderful if you could get those celebrities to do spots endorsing cigar smoking. I wonder how many would do it. <laughs> that would be a, that would be a, that would be, a, really, that would be quite them, unpopular now, wouldn't it? Well, no. I mean, you get, you, ask, you know, here's an athlete, a basketball player. I mean, I wonder whether you could get somebody in these times to go on television 
and say, I enjoy a fine cigar, and I think it's wrong to try to outlaw my right to enjoy it. Well, that's, that's, that's different than endorsing cigar smoking. I would never, I'm a smoker, I would never endorse oh, no, smoking. But, I, I'm but never endorse the right to smoke to do it and enjoy it. The freedom, the freedom, to, yeah, the freedom to, ha to light up a cigar. The freedom to do it, yeah. I mean, in, uh, in certain places, you know, there, you know, I'm not going to light up a cigar to, to indulge in the pleasure of it. That's all it really is. No, you can't do it to be. A, you can't do any of these things to be offensive to the population. But uh, you know, I, you individual know, liberty is the issue. The other, the other issue is, you know, people will look at a cigar and. It doesn't matter whether they are in a well-ventilated area, whether they're outside. They'll look at the cigar, the sight of a cigar, and they'll go... <coughs> <coughs> oh, yeah, the grimaces you would get walking down the street with these cigars. You would get people that would do a lot of little things to signal to you that you are offending them. Well, do you feel self-conscious smoking a cigar? Outside of the privacy of my own home. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I think so. Yeah. A, cigar, a cigar is the ultimate symbol of, uh, of uh, public offense and smoking. This is why this is such a wonderful place. You sure, you can, can come it. here and do it without guilt. You know? There's another place. A cigar smoking pot. This is wonderful, but this but is this is an walking extension. walking by outside and looking at it. This is, this is, is an extension. guys in here smoking cigars. Yeah, they're looking at us now. What, 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 are these freaks, what are these freaks doing smoking cigars? <laughs> this is an extension. Of yeah, here we are in the cigar smoking zoo. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> this is an extension of the uh, of the old back room of the tobacco shop, uh -huh. uh, where you know people would sit around, enjoy a cigar, and talk about the issues of the day. And it's more of, a, of an informal social gathering. There are very few of those left. You know what this also is like. I, I worked a year in the United Nobody States. Nobody discusses Senate. anything anymore. <laughs> well, we are. Uh, you know, yeah, and if yeah, the camera true. weren't here, we'd be talking about the same things. Sure, sure. You know, I worked in the Senate for a year, and there's a thing off the Senate floor called the cloakroom, mm -hmm. and it's leather sofas and chairs like this. And this is where the senators sit when they're not on the floor, and they're all smoking cigars. It is just like this room, and they debate what they're going to do. And you know, the bigger the better. I mean, some of these cigars these guys smoke are unbelievable. <laughs> you know, I mean, I think it's a, it becomes almost a part of their ego. You know? And that's what we found out what they were really thinking. <laughs> right, right. But I mean, you know, you talk about the but it's Smoking an informal parlance, exchange yeah. of ideas, sure. and it allows for that sort of informal gathering. I can't enjoy a cigar if I'm if I'm worried about offending someone else. Oh, I'm yeah, not sure. I'm not hostile by nature. I don't no, want to offend I, anyone. I, you know, you, like you say, you end up not doing it because yes. you went in doubt. And, and then you know you have resentment that they're forcing you not to enjoy what you want to enjoy, and there's resentment that they're wondering whether you're going to like that cigar you're holding. And, you know, there there's all of that in the LA pent up Times emotion. recently about fundraisers, yeah. and that, you know, they have these things where people pay a hundred dollars as a ticket and whatever, and a lot of people feel they have the right after dinner when they're paying that kind of money to light up, and that, that it is now really socially unacceptable. And that, well, that's the other thing, know, at those dinners everyone's served at the same time, so when a meal is done, the meal is done. So you're not offending someone else. This was something just a very few years ago was a regular thing, and yes, now know. you know they add, they have policies. Oh yeah, you, my God, you wouldn't think of smoking. Yeah, place. so it shows you how quickly this has turned this around. I mean, it's been change. very well. Amazing. They're not going to get my hundred dollars. I wouldn't give them the hundred bucks. Either, Anyways, no. it's three hundred now. Whatever, oh, that's whatever, <laughs> whatever it is. I buy it. But this club. regardless, isn't there still a certain romance attached to smoking a cigar? I mean. You guys must have some cigar stories. Of course it is. I mean, what Mark Twain reportedly smoked, what, 50 cigars a day? I don't know. No, I mean, but I can tell you a good story. Mark Twain also smoked, we've been smoked smoking, a pipe. We've been smoking here for, what, uh, 45 minutes. We're, we're yeah. still not through with the first cigar. <laughs> if you do 50 a day, my God, that'd, I'll tell be, you long, that'd be a long bit. I'll tell you a wonderful <laughs> story. Or else they were story. small cigars. Yeah. Um, Castro gives out boxes of Cuban cigars with the, the wrapper with the name of a person that he wants to honor and make it a gift, it's a personalized. And I was in Nicaragua working on a network uh, documentary and um, General Omar Torrios was the dictator of the country then and he gave us a box of cigars with his band on it uh, to, if we would deliver it to Ted Kennedy and sneak it back into the country. And we put it in equipment cases and did it. But before we delivered it to Ted Kennedy, we raked off the top row, and each of us kept. Uh, That's a very interesting story. I'm from Customs. We want us to be speaking. <laughs> <here. laughs> We've been looking for you for all these years. And how were they, Frank? How were the cigars? Oh, they're good. Let me yeah. tell you. 
let yeah. me tell you, one of the real tragedies of keeping those Cuban cigars out of the So it's a good argument to open up our uh, dialogue with Cuba. I think it's ridiculous not to. I mean, I, you know, I mean, after all these years, give me a break. I mean, they have, they really have some wonderful cigars there. Well, they, they do. In all fairness, though, the Cuban cigars are not what they used to be. Uh, not maybe not. They no, really no. aren't There's because of the you know years. the nationalization of all of those uh, plantations, the tobacco plantations. Uh, you know Davidoff, Zeno Davidoff was uh, oh, yeah. was there. I mean, worked on those plantations. Uh, most of those families left Cuba when uh, Castro came to power, and through the course of years in the Canary Islands, in Honduras, in the Dominican Republic. They have taken their seed, and they've taken and cultivated the soil, uh, and they are producing some extraordinary cigars in the Dominican Republic and Honduras. Would they, you say they're as good as the old Cuban cigars? Not the old Cuban cigars, but they're as good as a lot of the current Cuban cigars. Mm -hmm. uh, still, there's a romance to, to the Cuban cigars. There's oh, a yeah, part sure. of the, it's like the, the culture, the history. Sure is. But, you know, the other part of that is how much of that is uh, in our minds. When we know it's a Cuban cigar, we look at that band and we say, wow, this it's is a mythical a thing. cigar. You, how much of that do you enjoy just because you looked at the band and you said, ah, it is, it's going to be great. I can't say it's it it better than this cigar. I can't Who knows? say that. Yeah, you know? This is it's, a fine cigar. And this it's is like, what's the best wine? You know, how do you ever well, say? Well, what, other, makes a, point, what makes a good cigar? Well, but the other, the other point, let me just finish this one point, is that if if it is the mystique of the Havana cigar, or if it is actually that the leaf and the, the, the process of making the cigar is superior, it really doesn't matter to me, because the fact is, if you enjoy it more, then it's better. And if, if that enjoyment is in my head, or if it's in the cigar, it really doesn't matter to me, because it doesn't uh, mitigate my enjoyment of the cigar. Sure, sure. Tabaco, 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 tabaco. Melao, 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 melao. Fue usada por tortores, licenciados y abogados, santeros y paleros, vendedores de mercado. Superó a la medicina, a los productos exportados. Acabó con la malicia, la tristeza y el pecado. Qué tradición. 